listening to the Cozy Chaos Zone. I am your host, House of Dub. Stay cozy and embrace chaos. Welcome to the Cozy Chaos Zone. I am your host, House of Dub. In regards to all things cozy, I just put my pot roast in the slow cooker. It'll be ready in about six hours. In regards to all things chaotic, Dusty pooped in the house two times today. I was furious. Not at her. At myself for not picking up on the subtle hints that she had two steamy piles of poo inside of her that needed to go. And, you know, I let myself down. I let her down. I'm going to try to do better. And I know she's going to try to do better. All right. On today's episode, we are going to shine a spotlight on a song. And we are going to highlight an artist. That song is spinning that artist is mike horvath i'm really really excited because mike horvath is actually here with us today to talk about the song let's get hype mike how are you i'm fabulous how are you i loved that intro it was so fun i'm glad i'm glad you enjoy it thank you for taking the time out of your day and thank you for submitting your song spinning to the cozy chaos zone absolutely uh i want to just like dive right into the song uh tell me a little bit about it give me a little bit of a a lowdown what genre is it yeah doing anything crazy with it yeah i did i did all the crazy with it um no it's like i i never know how to really uh genreify myself so uh i call it like alternative rock or alt pop rock i don't exactly know what to call it but alternative something is definitely a good way to describe it okay yeah it's uh it's one of my few songs that doesn't have guitars so a lot of my stuff is kind of rock oriented but the song is sans guitars but it's got um some like horns and piano and bass and mostly just vocals and drums so yeah i noticed there were a bunch of really cool like horn lines and things of that nature (laughs) all right so that's that's really it's cool what what made you decide to go sans guitar it was like the the song didn't it didn't need it you know i got to this point it rarely happens with me because i guitar was like my first really like i was super passionate about the guitar when i started i was like a kid so everything i'm like oh it has to have guitar obviously but i was working on this song as part of an ep that i put out and everything else had guitar mostly and i was just kind of listening to it one day and i was like i had my guitar ready to go and then i was like i don't think i need to do this so it just worked without it and i i put it back and the guitar i mean and was done nice it's always good to be able to take that step back and be like does this really is this even necessary yeah exactly exactly it would, it would have felt i think too crowded if i had added and i didn't know it was a clean guitar distorted guitar kind of where to go with it so you said that this is part of an ep right this is, yeah and is this something you put out before as like a single no, this was just part of it. And it's a song that I don't know why I, I just really like it. <laughs> I feel like it's a it's a fun song because it's kind of a chaotic song. And that's what the lyrical content really is all trying to convey. And the music kind of, I think, at least attempts to uh, bring you on this kind of spinning journey of chaos. Yeah, um, I can actually even pull up the, the lyrics right here. <laughs> uh, I think it's possible for me to yeah right here there we go uh, there is one there is one typo uh, that i noticed the other day <laughs> oh yeah yeah so so with, with a song like this where okay so you said you started out writing guitar writing songs so i can assume that you maybe do a lot of writing on the guitar is that fair to say <laughs> Yeah, it's funny though. This song, I didn't. I started this song. I was taking a walk. I, I, I find my best ideas come to me when I'm just like not even remotely thinking about music. But I was. I the the quick backstory is that I was uh, I was in therapy, and my therapist had said to me, um, "Oh, it seems like you're spinning," <laughs> and and so I and I was. It was like so disheartening because I was kind of like, "Oh man, I am. I'm spinning out of control," and I'm and just just fast forward she later clarified that she didn't mean i was spinning out of control that i was spinning a lot of plates and so i was like oh that makes a thousand times more sense and i felt a lot better but for that like week leading up to it i kept thinking oh man my therapist thinks that i'm losing it and so i had written the song called electric and i had this thought oh i was feeling electric but the wire's dead and that's just where the rest of the song came from wow lyrically at least 
Wow. So you had the you had the the first line, you had an idea with it, and then the yep. rest of the song was able to just out of that one line, everything else yeah. just branched off. Pretty much, because I just because I was just I was like, what am I doing? I'm thinking about what my therapist said, and then it just kind of came out. I did sit down at the piano then this 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 bad boy, and uh, and I just played you know what I thought would kind of accompany it, and then wrote it on the piano, and then started adding everything else, and then opened BBC Orchestra and kind of had a field day with it. All right, so now walk me through what made you like so EP. Obviously, there's a bunch of songs on there. Usually, they kind of go on some sort of a continuity, maybe a story, mm-hmm. maybe maybe there's a theme, maybe there's like common ideas and structures. Was this song before you had the idea for the EP, or did you start formulating the EP as the songs all progress? Like, kind of give me <laughs> yeah. the timeline where this song sits in with all the others. The EP is interesting because it's six songs, and the six songs, a lot of them came from... Uh, songwriting blitz on the imf discord server um one of them was a monthly competition for the we are the music makers discord server which was the the last song on the ep one of them is a song that i wrote in like 2018 and then came back to as part of a songwriting blitz so that's three songs that came from a blitz one song from another server and then uh the the two others spinning and one other song were just like the organic one so basically i found myself realizing oh i'm working on like six different songs and i want to put these together to kind of tell this story and uh and that's that's really kind of what i did most of last year i found myself going oh i have like five songs i'll just release them as an ep and kind of parse together what you know is some sort of cohesive message or story you know yeah, it almost kind of sounds like you were spinning plates, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was spinning a lot of plates. Songs going, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're like, you know what? This would be yeah. easy to just slap together as one project. I love it when a when a, when a project kind of finds its own cohesiveness. Yeah, when when all yeah. these fragmented ideas can kind of just align together, and it's mm-hmm. like you never you never saw all these like rough jagged pieces fitting together so nicely. Yeah, and then you get like one yeah. nice kind of product out of it, which is pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. What? What did you run into any kind of issues uh, trying to come up with like horn lines and then figuring out how to make all the horn lines and stuff work? Is that something you've attempted before? Yes and no. That's a really good question because um, I'll try my best to answer it accurately. But yes, it was it was tricky because I so like I played trumpet in like sixth grade, right? So I don't really have and it was like a year of my life. I don't remember how like horn arrangements go. So I but I've gotten more into the habit of opening BBC Orchestra and just starting to add whatever I want as far as like sounds like it would be cool if a violin did it or this would be cool if a, a trumpet did it. So I had this really, the groove, the drum groove was so, I think it was from a punk pack from Groove Monkey with two E's.com. And it was just so, it like kind of was punky Scottish. And so I I just, for some reason, horns just kind of popped into my head. And the difficulty is, and this is something that I didn't realize until after the song was already on Spotify, is that there's this sour, it's not even a sour note, it's a sour collision of notes, where there's two different parts in the second and third chorus. One horn part is doing a higher part, one horn part's doing the main part, and then they collide. And it's like, they should be here in a way that is harmonically, you know, uh, sound, <laughs> but they're not. And it creates this really awkward tension that I realized I actually like because it is so indicative of just like how the song is supposed to be kind of chaotic or spinning out of control. Like if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can, I can, I can definitely see where you're going with that. So it's not something you've really attempted before you were kind of just pulling back on old things that you knew, but how how many times have you attempted like that particular horns? Yeah. Not many times. There's like one other song I have that has horns, and somebody described them as like heroic or like a heroic horn line. And I thought that was really cool. So that idea of trying to obtain or attain uh, like the heroic sound from horns is really cool. And it's just BBC Orchestra. That's all I did. So my process is basically play one part on the high trumpet, throw it on another trumpet an octave up, throw it on the uh, whatever comes after the trumpet, just the generic horns. And then there's the trombone, the bass trombone, the 
bassoon. And so I just do all of those and I write or I just do each part and sometimes I just like copy it or humanize it or whatever and just do the lazy thing. But it's mostly just stacking a ton of instruments and then sometimes doubling them and like delaying them by 20 milliseconds just to make it sound really wide and huge. Yeah, yeah that actually like goes right into the next part of this which is i want to talk about just in the daw production wise you've mentioned yeah. what is this bbc orchestra bbc orchestra yeah is a free plugin by spitfire i want to say it was i think it's free now it used to be that you had to do a survey to do it and then you get it like a month later but it's just a free symphonic orchestra it's got some really cool sounds i'm super lazy with it i don't do enough it's kind of embarrassing how little i i do to these instruments but <laughs> just kind of bury them in stacks of each other um but i do all that within studio one yeah all right so you're using studio one mm -hmm. um when it comes to like when you when you're arranging composing and working in the daw like just kind of run me through your process what do you this song in particular like how, how yeah. did you go from from demo to this yeah the demo it's funny i was just thinking about the song and then i found the voice notes of like when i was walking down the street like breathily singing into my phone um so i started with you know the, the lyrics and the melody of and then uh that's how I write a lot of everything is just singing melodies. So like, even if I'm playing something on a MIDI keyboard, trumpets wise or whatever wise, it's usually something that I'm hearing in my head, uh, where it comes from. I have no idea, but I just, that's how I harmonize things. And it's just, I just hear it and I go, Oh, that, that would sound cool. So with the piano parts, it was just a matter of finding matching chords. I probably did very little to like a bass line, but usually what would come first would be drums. And it's funny because I mentioned using Groove Monkey. <laughs> you can you can probably find the exact breakdown that I used in one of these punk packs. Like you too could have the sound of this song in your song if you have addictive drums too and Groove Monkey groups. But uh, yeah, I usually lay down something so that I don't have to play to a metronome because I just hate it. Okay. And then uh, just kind of built from fair. there. Usually, like the the accessory work or like the the horns and like anything symphonic usually comes kind of last. Just sort of the extra stuff. I mean, and it sounds like it really all comes together. Now, do you um, do you have any other like little like mixing techniques, little little tips, tricks, anything like that? Any kind of like secret sauce stuff you gotta do? Any, any kind of tips, tricks you like to divulge? Anything that you employ <laughs> particular? Anything you employ particularly on this track that the listeners should listen out for? Um, I I mean, I'm so like <clears throat> I I like to speak poorly of myself no is the short answer but yes in that i think that the idea of making everything really wide really helps like uh that that is something that i do in almost every single song is that i triple track every single chorus and i triple track the harmonies and then hard pan left right center and i usually keep them the same volume i've gotten feedback before that it would sound better if the, the two left and right were lower but i just can't seem to like get away from this thing that i love which is just this insanely wide vocal harmony stack um probably from like listening to a lot of queen in my formative years and broadway musicals so that that'll do it um but yeah widening and then also just like i said duplicating you know those like those symphonic parts and kind of delaying them and panning those just lots of panning and reverb i guess um i like to ask like chaos questions every now and then yeah uh, if you had to um if you had to choose whether or not like um you you were like you had to do a musical okay mm -hmm. you, do, you have to do a musical like right mm -hmm. now like you need to go mm -hmm. i'm trying to I, the only reason why i'm, st I'm stammering is because i can't think of anything that's on broadway right now do you know what's on broadway right now Probably, Ham a, probably if Hamilton. You in, if you had to be in a Broadway musical right now, what would you what would you be in? I would probably be in Little Shop of Horrors. I love that okay. show. That's such All a good right. show. Who are you playing in it? Seymour, obviously. Okay. Only because only because suddenly Seymour is such a good karaoke song, and it it's really just is. really fun to sing. It really is. It really. That's is. a great chaotic question, though. I mean, I try to keep it. I try to keep it chaos. Try to keep it cozy. The music kind of <laughs> keeps it all cozy, but I try to like every now and then throw it in there. And for sure, you know, you, I, I, I always try to find out where like you can weasel the coziness and the chaos into. There you go. Into every aspect of it. Um, well, so the song obviously uh, sounds awesome. 
And I'm thank super you. Happy I really you appreciate it. it. I'm really happy you brought it to the program. I'm really happy you um, took the time out of your day to uh, do the interview. Now, as we're kind of wrapping it up, uh, do you have any like plugs? Do you have any place people can find your stuff? Where do you want people to d- like directly focus? their attention and their clicks. Where do you want these thumbs to go? There's thumbs ready to click on things. There's <laughs> thumbs. There's, where do you want the thumbs to click? I guess Spotify. You know, I so I distribute through DistroKid, so I'm everywhere, but realistically the the numbers that I check the most are probably Spotify just because that's you know, at the end of the day, I only ever put music out there for my friends and family to listen to. Anybody else that hears it is just like that's incredible and I love it. But yeah, uh, stream me on Spotify under my Corvath. I'm trying to put out stuff uh every couple of months and um usually in the form of like a short EP of some sort. Awesome. Awesome. And is there like a, any other social medias that people can uh, follow you on where you'll keep updated on yes. where your latest releases are? Yes. You can find me on Instagram just under M Horvey, which is my username I'm pretty much everywhere. So yeah, pretty easy to find. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you once again for being on the cozy chaos. So Absolutely. I look forward to hearing more submissions from you. Awesome. In the future. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a good one. You too.